and sharing your word with you. I've been in the ministry for 65 years, and God is blessed, and I've had a wonderful time in serving him. I want you to turn in your Bible, if you will, over to Mark chapter 11, and I'm going to begin reading at verse 20. My question is tonight to all of us, including me, and I'm here tonight not for you to hear me, but to hear him. My question is, how strong is your faith? How strong is it? Listen to what Jesus said there. He was with his disciples there. In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Peter called into remembrance and said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curest is withdrawn away. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall receive them. I want us to examine what faith is all about when you study the Word of God. Faith is looking to God for help. The Bible says that faith is the hand that reaches out and takes God's gifts and provisions. We have that faith in Him. Faith is resting in the Lord and the fulfillment of His promises. But the tragedy of it is that so many times we spend more time in looking at ourselves and at the world and rather than looking at God. How much time do we spend with God? How much time do you read the Word of God? How much time do you pray? But the big question is, how strong is our faith? Because when we do these things that we don't trust in God and don't walk with God, we have unbelief that comes in our heart. Now, what does unbelief do? Unbelief will damn the soul of men, the Bible says. Unbelief hinders the Lord of His work. When many visit the town of Nazareth, you remember what Jesus said? He, they said he did not many mighty works there because of that what? Unbelief. They did not believe in him. I want us to look at the strong faith and what does it mean to have faith. I have a lot of people over the years in the ministry that I've been in that uh, say, uh, when you ask them to do something, to serve the Lord or to pray or do something, they say, I can't do that. Uh, my, I don't have enough faith. It's not how much faith you have. It's how strong is your faith. That's a problem with our world today. They're always worried about, if I had enough faith, I could do this. No, it's how strong is the faith that you've got, you see. And I want to examine this, what it means to have faith in God, strong faith in God. And the first thing I want you to notice is, I believe that the Bible tells us that having a strong faith, it gives us a song to sing. I love to praise the Lord. Uh, I love to sing. I just have a hard, uh, you know, I carry a tune once in a while, but I have a hard time unloading it. And, uh, you know, I love to sing the praises of God there. But the man without faith, he has what? He has no song in his heart. That was a man by the name of H.G. E. Spratford. He moved over here from London, England to find a job. He had a job over here and he worked over here. He stayed over for about two years and him and his family decided they wanted to go back and visit back over in London, his family and some of the kin folks he had. And the day before they went on that ship to go over there to London, the day before that, something come up in his job and he cannot go. And he asked his family, he said, you still want to go? And they said, well, we'd love you to go with us. But he said, I want to go, you go ahead and I'll come later. Well, he sent his family over there and halfway over there, that ship sank. He lost his family, his wife, and three children. And he decided a year later after that happened that he would take a trip on another ship going over that same place. He got on the ship there and he asked the captain, he said, can you tell me just about where that ship went down a year or so ago? He said, oh yeah, I remember that. And so when they got about over there real close, the captain came to his cabin and said, sir, we're about there. A.G. Spratford went out there and stood on the side of that ship there, looked out in the ocean, ocean where he lost his family. Then pretty soon he went back to his room and he sat down for a moment and he began to write some songs. And many of you know this probably and you've sang it before. When peace like a river attendeth my soul, when sorrows like
like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. He didn't stand out there on the side of that ship and shake his fist at God and say, why did you do this, God? You took my family. Why? No, he had a strong faith to believe that whatever God wanted to do in his life. And I love that song there. And there's another person by the name of Fanny Crosby. When Fanny Crosby was a little baby, she got some infection in her eyes. And her mother took her to a doctor. And the doctor put some cream in that to help get, get rid of that uh, thing she had. Well, two or three days later, she became blind. She was blind for the rest of her life. But she had a strong faith in God because when you look into the hymn book, there are many songs that, that she wrote. Now, don't nobody leave. I'm not going to sing anymore, okay? <laughs> Ear the cross, to God be the glory. And my favorite one is, blessed assure, Jesus is mine. You see, she had a strong faith in God even though she was blind. And I've often wondered how many times in your life and mine when we have problems and situations like that, how strong is our faith to walk through it? Or do we blame God? Do we say, what, well, God, what are you doing to me? Don't you know who I am? No, there are people like that. Faith sings because it does what? It'll take away the fears and doubts in your heart. Faith will give you a light to shine in the darkness. Faith will give you a light and have a heavy heart. I remember several years ago that I got a call. I was pastoring in Oklahoma. And I got a call from one of my brothers in, in Lynchburg, Virginia, where I was born. And they said, our mother's in the hospital intensive care, and she may not make it out. Can you come on out? I got in my car, and I drove for 25 hours, and I sang this little song. I'm not going to sing it loud, okay? Hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning, weeping only lasts through the night. You see, God is always there with us when we have that strong faith. And if we depend on him, even when trouble comes, we need to say what? I want to have a strong faith in God. Not only does the Bible tell us that what? Having a strong faith sings, but having a strong faith does what? It serves. It serves God. Have you ever recently been asked, can you do this in the church or can you do that? And you've said, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. Well, what about your faith? What about that strong faith, you see? I remember studying the Bible, some of the great men. The Bible says, by faith, Noah built the ark. Can you just imagine Noah? One day, God, with his boys, come and says, Noah, I want you to build an ark for me. Okay, Lord. A what? An ark. He had no idea what an ark was. But he had a strong faith to do what? To obey God and to live for God and walk with God. And he built that ark there, you see. Moses. Moses was a, a young shepherd boy that stayed out all in the field uh, keeping watch over the sheep. You know. He was a real nobody. The shepherds back in those days were nobody. They were just uh, hard workers in taking care of sheep. And, and one morning he was getting up and he looked out over there and he saw the bush burning. And uh, it kept on burning, but it didn't consume. And he started to go over there to see what, what's happening. And he heard a voice says, Moses, take your shoes off because the ground you're standing on is holy ground. And God said to him, Moses, I want you to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land. You see, if you stop and think about this, God is not looking for important people high in the ranks or high and powerful names in our world. He's looking for people that are willing to do what? Step out with a strong faith. And Moses did that. I remember Joshua that God told him to what? Lead the children of Israel to the promised land. And uh, he went out there, you see, and, and the, the Bible tells us he told them to do what? He told them to walk around that city and watch around it for seven days. Now, you know what he told them to do? Don't say a word until the seventh day. And when the seventh day comes, you praise God. I've often said it, he wasn't no Baptist in that group. You know why? Because Baptists couldn't walk on for seven days and not say nothing. They got to talk. We got to talk all the time. And, and I, I remember thinking about this, that faith does not ask for the easy way out. A strong faith will serve God. Anybody can serve God. I got saved back in Lynchburg, Virginia, at Park Avenue Baptist Church when I was 15 years of age. 
My mom and dad were alcoholics. I'm the oldest of seven. They spend the weekends in bars, and sometimes I had to take care of my brothers and sisters to find some food to feed them. But all of a sudden, one of these days, one of the days, my mom and dad started going to a church. They never took us to church, never invited us to go, but they started going to church. They met on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, uh, I, I asked them one day, I said, Mom, that, y'all not going to the bars anymore. You're not getting drunk anymore. What happened? Oh, we got saved. You got what? See, I never heard about that. And about uh, two weeks later, my mom and dad invited me to a revival meeting at Park Avenue Baptist Church. I'd never been to a revival meeting, never been inside a church. And so I went that night, and we got on the bus. We didn't have a car, rode there. Got off the bus, and I walked down and saw the church there. But out in the lawn there, out in the yard next to the church, were a bunch of folding chairs, uh, an organ, and a piano up on a platform. I said, what in the world is this? And mom and dad said, this is where we're going to have revival, outside. I said, what's wrong with your building? Now, you know, you got a nice building. Well, we're going to have it outside here. Well, I went to that revival that night, and I said that every time seen that, that preacher would get up and preach, he said, all of sin. And every time he pointed that finger, it seemed like he pointed right at me. And I thought, looked at mom and dad, what's it, what they've been telling him about me, you know? And he said, all of sin, all of sin. Got close to the service there, you know, they were giving an invitation, and I'm holding on to the chair there in front of me, and my dad said, son, you don't need to hold on that chair, it's not going anywhere. And I, I began to just say, I said, God, if you get me out of this place safe tonight, I promise you I'm not coming back to this place. All this loud singing and that wild preacher. You know where I was Thursday night? I was back in that revival. And that preacher still preached all of sin, and he keeps on pointing his finger. And I got in a conviction and realized, man, you're a sinner. You need to be saved. And they gave invitation. I went down. The pastor met me. And he said, this is what you need to do. Somebody's going to come and pray with you. And you pray. And you ask God to forgive you for sin. Ask Jesus to come in your heart. And, and I got saved at the age of 15. Well, that Friday night, I didn't go back to church. I, I went to a little uh, cafe where I met with a bunch of boys. And we shut the pinball machine and had snacks and we used to go out and do some of the meanest things on the face of the earth. I'll never forget, and don't, don't say too much about this. One Halloween night, one of our boys said, let's go out there. It's a rich community, and let's see what we can do out there. And we went out there, and one of the boys said, hey, I've got an idea. Come follow me. And we went around back of this house. There had no lights on, nobody there. And he found a woman, a window that was open, and he kind of opened it up and took a hose and turned the water on and shot it in there. I said, what are you doing, man? Th those are kind of boys. But after I got saved, I went back to that little cafe. I said, hey, guys, let me tell you what happened to me. Man, I got saved the other night. I, I trusted Jesus as my Savior. Oh, little sissy Joe, we're going to put on a little tie, and he's going to church. He's not going to go with us anymore. You see, sometimes that's what people think about us. But I believe that the Bible tells us that song of faith there will help us to serve. And not only that, but I believe that faith, having a strong faith, supplies that every need. Listen to what Philippians 4.19 said. My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. Now some people read it like this. My God shall supply all of my needs according to my checking account and saving account from the bank. That doesn't say that. It says it comes from Christ, you see. And God supplies. And he wants us to do what? He, he doesn't want us to worry about things. But how often in our life have we worried about eating and finding food and clothes? We worry about tomorrow. What am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do next week? We worry about those things, you see. But trust in God and having a strong faith in God, we don't need to worry about those things. God will supply our needs according to his riches. I remember what he said in Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye the kingdom of heaven, of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things, you see. And I, I, I just believe that faith in God ought to be strong enough that we don't even worry about tomorrow. God's going to take care of those things. We've got to trust him with that. The fourth thing I notice about have faith being strong, faith stands. Do you have strong faith tonight that you could stand against anything? I look at the Bible again and I study these Old Testament men. And the Bible says that one day that Job had lost all that he had. And you know what his wife said? Why don't you curse God and die? But you know what he said? Though he slay me yet, will I trust him. But I will maintain my own ways before him. 
Joshua said this, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Elijah stood against the prophet of Baal and brought a revival to Israel on Mount Carmel. And then Paul was hated and despised when he went out preaching. He went to jail. They put him down. But he never gave up. I heard a story from one of our missionaries that went over to the deepest part of Africa one year to minister and take the gospel. He found a group of people meeting in an old straw cottage down there. They had built a straw hut there. And about 50 of them were coming together on Sunday morning. And some guy was uh, taking the Bible and, and reading. And he was invited to, you know, uh, tell them how to do that. And uh, he heard the story later on after he left there that they were there one Sunday morning. And he, the guy was up there teaching the word of God. And uh, the area that they lived in, the people didn't want anybody to come to preach the word. They didn't want the Bible to be around. They didn't want to hear any of that stuff. And while he was studying and te teaching the Bible to those 50 people, all of a sudden in the back door came about 10 or 15 military men with guns. And they said, we're going to give you two choices. Choice number one is, if you will deny that book that he's teaching from and deny him and that God, we'll let you go out that door free. But if you don't, we're going to kill every one of you. They have been lined up against the wall. You know how many of that 50 people walked out of that place that morning? The missionary said not one. All 50 of them died for their faith in God. I want to ask you that same question. What if tonight, before we got through, that there would be some military men like that come in, the enemy, and sat, line us up against the wall? Do we have a strong enough faith to say, we're going to give you two choices? Walk out of this building, would you run out or would you stay here? That's a strong faith that God has given us. And I believe that we will do that because the Bible says in number five here, faith, strong faith, faith saves us. It's not by works we're saved. I, I get amazed when I talk to people about being saved and trusting the Lord. And I say, uh, do you know for certain if you die today, you'd go to heaven? And they said, oh, yeah. And I said, well, what makes you so sure? Oh, well, I joined the church uh, several months ago. Or somebody said, well, I was sprinkled on Sunday morning. Somebody said, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just good as anybody else. That's not being saved, folks. That's not having a strong faith in God. If we, all we can do is that, then why did Jesus Christ go to the cross and die and shed his blood for an old Richard sinner like you and me? I remember one week, we left Oklahoma going traveling on vacation, me and my wife, and we came across this little country town, and I saw this sign that said church here, and a lot of cars out there. I said, let's stop and go to church. And we went there and stopped, and the preacher preached a good message. At the end of the service, he had a baptismal service. And it really amused me because, first of all, when he took the first person, he said, uh, I take this water, and uh, I now baptize you to wash all of your sins away. And when we left that building and went away for, on the road, got back on the road, I said, honey, wait a minute. We need to go back to that church. She said, Why? I said, I want to get some of that water because if that water washes sin away, man, I can make a lot of money with that, you see. It's not what you do. It, it's faith in God, a strong faith in God. Christians are saved by what? By the grace of God that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and for mine. And I want to close with this. I want to give you some things to take with you tonight, may suggest a fallen thing. Number one, take God at his word and believe the Bible. Second of all, remember that God has never failed. Third, God is concerned about you and launch out into the deep. That's the strong faith that God wants us to have. If you're here tonight, there's something else about your strong faith. If you're here tonight as a sinner, you need to understand several things. That faith saves us from hell. Jesus said this, He that believeth on him have everlasting life. It's not the preacher, not the pope, it's not the, uh, you know, the rabbis and all of those churches. It's faith in God. Faith saves us. Faith washes us. And faith in what? In Jesus Christ. That's the only way to get to heaven. So I've asked myself many times that, and I, and I found it out in God's word. How strong is your faith? And my faith had to be strong because after I got saved after 15, at the age of 17, we had a bunch of young people sitting on the front row in our church at Park Avenue in Lynchburg, Virginia. And we, we listened to preaching, did the singing and all. And uh, 
one morning, I thought Sunday morning there, all of a sudden I, I just felt something in my life. I couldn't explain it then, that God was calling me to preach. Now, I was the most shy, bashful kid on the face of this earth. I, I failed science class twice. And I remember that the second time that I walked in that class, they said, Mr. Knowles, it's good to have you back with us again. That embarrassed me, you know. But I wanted to ask questions, but I was so bashful I didn't do it. And I remember that Sunday night when I went to that church there, I didn't sit on the front row. I sat on the back row. I just wanted to get away from God and what he's trying to call me to preach. And all of a sudden, when the preacher gave the invitation, because I'd never talked to anybody about it, he said, there's somebody here tonight that God is calling to preach. And I want you to come down here, and I want to pray with you, and, and I want to talk with you. And I said, God, who told him that? Have you been, have you been talking to him, huh? I surrendered to preach. I preached my first sermon there in that church at the age of 17. I got up there to preach that night. First time I preached, I opened my Bible and had my thing. I wanted to preach. God told me to preach. And they were all sitting out there like some of you are doing right now. Okay, here we are. What are you going to do? I preached for 10 minutes. That's the shortest sermon I've ever preached. Then. <laughs> but I want to challenge you tonight. If you're here and you've never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we're going to have an invitation song. I'll meet you here. Or some of the deacons and men will meet you here too. And we'd like to pray with you that you might trust Jesus because you could be saved tonight. It's not joining the church. It's not being baptized, not being good. It's giving your life to Jesus Christ, accepting him as Lord and Savior. And we'll do that tonight. Let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you for the joy and the powerful word that you give us. And Lord, I pray that we'll continue to live our life with a strong faith. No matter how difficult your life might be, no matter how many troubles we might have, no matter how the situation might go in our world, Father, help us to stand strong in our faith and never be ashamed of who you are and what you've done for us. Lord, I pray right now, if there's anyone here tonight that has never trusted Jesus Christ, I pray that they'll come and take that step of faith. And ask Jesus to forgive them and come into their life and leave this place tonight knowing that by faith that they are a child of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.